I'm just working, man. I know what my audience is like. I did some independent films with Master P, and a lot of those movies did really well. Mm -hmm. I'm ambitious, I'm a hustler. I have my own lane. That's the thing about comedy. You wake up every day, you don't know if you're funny that day. My, my my next guest to the show, the program, speaking of master class, this guy is a, um, man, he's a, a jack of all trades. He's a guru, uh, a relationship expert. He's a podcast host. He's, 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 he's done it all. The big homie from the West Coast. Welcome to the program, Zoe Williams. What's up with you, Zoe? Yo, 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 what up, Lamont? Hey, man, long time no rap, man. Yeah, man. It's, 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 it's you, been, it's, man. I'm glad you out here doing it, bro. Yeah, man. Just trying to trying to hang in there. And I uh I, I came across, you know, doing my doing my Googles, as I always say. Um and I came across, you know, your 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 face and your page and I was like, Oh yeah, I wonder what my man Zoe is working on. Because every time I, I speak to you, which is not uh frequently, but over the years, um you're always leveling up. And you're either you're in a, in a teaching space, you're in a, in a in an educating space, you're in a you know broadcast communication space. You're always trying to improve the culture. Um, yeah. And I see that you're dropping a master class on relationships. Talk to me a little bit about that and what that entails. So really quickly, in 2015, I released a book called "The Relationship Dismount." How to Fix the Landing When Exiting a Toxic Relationship. Mm. Four years later, <laughs> right, four years later, uh, I followed that book up with uh, 2019's release, The Holographic Relationship. Mm. And, yeah, you know, what's, what's crazy is, you know, this big Jada Pinkett, Will Smith, August Alcina, you know, fiasco, and she talked about entanglement. In the book, I have a chapter called Relationship Entanglement. What is <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> now this is this. Quite serendipitous. <laughs> yeah, no, no, not not in the least bit serendipitous. She she lifted that. She she read that. That's all. That's all yours. <laughs> you are the source. <laughs> You're the no, source. So, so the master class is is based off of those two books. And then the next one that's coming out next year called The Shrouded Lighthouse. Okay. So let me yeah. back up. Your first your first book, The Relationship Dismount, um, yes. it seems so self-explanatory. Your second book, <laughs> I mean, it's like right there. That would jump out at me uh, 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 if I if I walk past that in the, you know, on the, on the shelves. Then the, the second one, right. The Relationship Hologram, are you saying... Are you the, hologra the holographic the ho relationship? Yeah, that's the one that's not there. Is that is is that what that's about? The one that you think is really the there, but it doesn't really exist. Well, no, um, the holographic relationship, which that's why I thought it was quite uh, serendipitous that Jada would mention it. The holographic relationship finds me taking leading edge science principles and turning them into relationship principles. So ah. entanglement is a science principle that talks about how two subatomic particles can be entangled regardless of the distance, right? Hmm. And okay. I talked about I talked about how the same thing can be applied to soulmates, twin flames, uh, and, and you know this uh, incredible bond that we may have with a person regardless of if they're still in our lives or not. So. I, I talked about that as a type of entanglement. This year, do back to back. So when that guy right. comes, I'm sorry, I'm on the radio. You, I, I'm you, well, you, that's, you that's getting gas, man? He's a trainer. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> we can't do back to back, Jay. We over here. Yeah, I'm like, all right, okay. Uh, <laughs> no, my son is training. He's he's training right now, and he went back to back. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, nah, it's all good. So yeah. Um, the holographic relationship, the principle, really quickly, um, that's a leading, cutting-edge concept of how scientists are starting to describe 
our reality. They're saying it's holographic, kind of like the Matrix. Oh, and I okay. applied that concept to relationships. I'm basically saying uh, hologram, hollow, whole, gram, writing, whole writing. Or in other words, your whole story comes with you, regardless of you trying to put your best foot forward or you trying to wear a particular type of mask. Your whole story, everything you've been through, comes with you in a relationship environment. That's what mm-hmm. makes it holographic. Another, in, uh, another feature of holography is if you take holographic film and it has a picture of, say, an apple on it, a three-dimensional picture of an apple, and you okay. chop that, that holographic film up into a billion pieces, you can take one sliver of the holographic film and shine a light through it, and it'll have the full apple, the whole image. And you could do that to mm. every piece. So what that says about holographic film is that the image is non-local. And I'm trying to explain to everyone that trauma is non-local. Unresolved relationship issues are non-local. They come with you regardless of if the relationship has ended. <laughs> you know, they, they, they're generational even. Uh, right. You have some people who talk about, uh, or they call them epidemiologists, they talk about how, you know, all of these diseases come down through our generational lines. It's holographic. The whole story mm. is always with us. So that's what that particular book was about. And <laughs> what is relationship entanglement is in that book. <laughs> <laughs> Which makes perfect sense. <laughs> right. Um, so, so, so talking about the Red Table Talk, right, as, as someone who apparently – breaks things like that down when you saw that what was your what was your biggest takeaway was it was it promotion was it publicity was it real trauma was it was it scripted like what was your big takeaway from the two of them at that table when they addressed august alcina right is that Mm -hmm. is that the one you're talking about when when yeah 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 yes yes oh well I felt that it was disingenuous. Mm. And the reason why I say that is it was predicated on helping somebody. But then, you know, listening to it, I was like, well, who who are you helping? The kid or you? Right? Mm. Because, you know, she said she was hurt. She said uh, she, she wanted some things. But you can't want it from the person you're helping. Right? So, Mm. (laughs) for me... Just like, you know, uh, I, when I talk to people all the time about therapy and a therapist can't, I, I think it's inappropriate for a therapist to, to hook up with one of his clients, right? Mm. <laughs> I, think, I think it's inappropriate, right? If you're helping somebody, you know they're vulnerable. And if you were in a positionality where you needed something from them, you probably could get it because you're helping them. <laughs> See? Wow. So yeah. I yeah. felt like she didn't she wasn't a hundred percent truthful about her right yes august needed help sure but what about you how much help do you need and still need and they they kind of laughed it off a little bit like yeah we're gonna be dysfunctional this haha this this is who we are you know and i think I, i thought it was a little bit disingenuous now now you you deal with uh you you do a lot of self help. You do a lot of life coaching. You uh, obviously mm-hmm. with the University of You relationship masterclass that you're now launching. You deal with couples mm-hmm. and and how people deal with each other. Um, looking at that relationship and comparing it to the dis the dysfunction that we saw in that. On a scale of one to ten, the average couple or the average person in relationships are they more dysfunctional or less dysfunctional than what we saw at that table? Is that the norm? Well, in your experience. And the reason why I ask that is, I, is because we like we like misery loves company and we we it's like a train wreck. We like to watch other people right. go through it. But what we don't acknowledge is the fact that our situation be be the same and sometimes worse. Right. Right. Well, and I agree with you. I I agree with you. Everybody has their own level of dysfunction. What I saw with Will and Jada, 
I'm going to go the other way. I, I was impressed with the fact that they stayed on the same page. Hmm. Okay. They stayed on the same page. I mean, they're they're excellent managers of their dysfunction. And I don't believe right. a lot of people are excellent managers or stewards of their dysfunction. <laughs> you know, it's, hmm. the dysfunction it. is just like a wild animal in the house, you know, that just right. it, it, nobody can tame it. But I think they are great managers of their image. They're great managers of their brand. And I think they're great managers of their appetite. And again, they showed that regardless of whatever it is that they're doing, they're going to be on the same team about it. Right. So, right. I mean, I gave them, I gave them credit for that. And we're talking with uh, Zoe Williams from the University of U. Also, uh, you're probably familiar with him from the uh, Corey Holcomb 5150 uh, podcast. He has a new relationship master class that he's launching that will be available soon. Uh, if you could, like, give me a couple things that people in relationships get wrong and that could easily be done better. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> number, I, I think the number one thing is uh, seeking fulfillment and completion from your partner. It's not their job. Wow. Okay. It's just not their job to fulfill you or to complete you. We've been listening to Babyface too long, and, and we've been listening to <laughs> yeah. Walt Disney. Yeah. Like, that's not their job. And in American society, what we've forgotten is that relationship is spiritual it's a spiritual classroom it's a highly okay. reflective classroom where the biological feedback you get from your partner is really the work you need to do on yourself mm. right that's that's your work right you get peeved from your partner but whatever you're peeved about is stuff you need to work on why are you ah. peeved about it mm. if that set you off where did that come from, right? No, it's easier to blame than it is to claim. You see? Man, <laughs> you, you, you got some hip-hop quotables there, uh, cousin. You got a lot of bars. You're dropping a lot of bars there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so part one, part one is acknowledging that. Part one is acknowledging that. Two is the, is the fix. What what are what are some fixes right. for for that type of um, you know condition, if you will, or well, space? Please understand that when you say fix, you have to be careful with the word fix because the opposite of fix is broken. Okay. And nothing is really broken. Nothing is really broken, right? And fix the word comes with a whole bunch of baggage. Oh, once we fix this, we good. Hmm. No, that's <laughs> that's not how it works, right? right? You know, knowledge and learning about oneself is an incremental process, right? You learn a hmm. little about yourself in every relationship you're in if you're paying attention, right. right? So that would mean the knowledge of self is a fragmented process. Well, reality is fragmented. Right. Reality is quantized. Time is quantized. You go all the way from eons down to nanoseconds. Right. And everything right. else in between. Everything comes in bits and pieces. So when we say fix, we don't want to say, hey, we never have to worry about this issue again. What we want to say is we have some tools here that can help us. Right. Fix or correct or get in alignment with where we need to be in this moment. We might not need to stay in this moment. Hmm. So I choose alignment over fix every time. Okay. And sometimes when you get in alignment, you need you need a realignment. Exactly. And, and you know, or a tune up. It, yeah, but it's not broken. I'll yeah, take that. But yeah, it's yeah. not broken. And I'll adjust I'll adjust my language uh accordingly. Yeah. Now, now, yeah, now with there that, we go. Come on, you know me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, now with that, with that uh, process, you know, of realigning, how often should that happen? How often should you be looking to, to, to um, uh, improve, you know, th that status? 
Well, again, with for, uh, yeah. education is a lifelong process, and so True is story. your personal development. So when you and, – and this is – I love the way you asked that question because this is a question that many people ask, and what I'm trying to explain, there's never – not going to be a time where you need to work on yourself. So, right. you know, so the question implies maybe one day, you know, I would have put in enough work and then this whole process is over. Right, 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 right. A young lady say, when, when, do, when do the lessons stop coming? I think I've learned enough. Well, if you've learned <laughs> enough, the lessons would stop, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> According to that logic, right? Right, right. <laughs> The lessons are going to continue to come because the truth of you is going to continue to unfold in interactions, right? right? Every time you have a relation, a relational experience, there's going to be an unfoldment of another area of your being that you had no knowledge of and that, that you can grow from, that you can learn from if you're paying attention, right? A lot of people are focused on outcomes as opposed to spiritual income, like what's happening in me, right? Where, where did this stuff come from? And, and again, the outcome takes on a different kind of importance when you start from the space of, I need these things in order to be somebody, in order to feel like someone. So the outcome becomes the filler for this empty vessel that you believed yourself to be. But no. It's the opposite. You were full to begin with, and you put the onus on someone outside of you to fulfill you when you mm. didn't have to. You were already full. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I'm all the way. <laughs> I'm all the way with it. Hey, are you open to taking a couple calls? Absolutely. Okay. All right. So we, we you're listening to the Karen Hunter show. Mr. Lamont King filling in. Uh, we got Zoe Williams from the University of U. It's launching a master class. 866-801-8255. Just want to get a, a couple questions if you got them. 866-801-8255. And while we wait for that, um, your master class, what, what what can we expect if if I enroll? What, what am I getting when I enroll? Well, I put together a curriculum. Okay. And just like we, just like it's named, uh, uh, the University of You, I use that as a euphemism to say that's what relationship is. It is the University of You. This is where you learn the most about who you are, is when you're relating with someone. So, what I've done is I've taken all of the exercises from my first book, The Relationship Discipline. All of the questions from my second or my third. Ah, tell the people Hello. stop calling oh, you, Zoe. Wait a minute, wait a minute, go back because you cut oh. out. You guys, you cut out. You, the telemarketers, the robocalls called you while you was talking. You took excerpts from your oh, first I'm, book, and that's when you cut out. Yeah. Minute. <laughs> I'm on the freeway, brother, driving, so anything oh, can okay. happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true story. Yeah, no, you so were saying you, you, you took bits what, what from your the last thing. You took bits oh. from your first book. Right. Yes, I took uh, all of the exercises from my first book, The Relationship Dismount. And mm-hmm. then I took all of the questions from my third book, The Holographic Relationship. And from there, we built a curriculum around it. And what we also provide outside of the curriculum is a 25-book relationship toolbox so Hmm. books from from other authors that i enjoyed uh of course my my books are in that toolbox as well but there are many books in there that i feel like this is a great starter kit for anybody that's in a relationship that needs some clarity on how to communicate uh on how to understand the fluctuations of intimacy uh how to deal with uh narcissism how to deal with a couple that, you know, getting in your own way type of personality. It's, it's a whole array of uh, books that we put in that uh, toolbox that I think is going to be very beneficial for those who, who join the class. All right. Good stuff. Uh, let's go to New York. Jackie, welcome to the Karen Hunter Show. You're on with uh, Lamont King. And say hi to Zoe. Hi there. Thanks for taking my call. 
So I'm in a relationship hey. for se- hi there. I'm in a relationship for seven years. We're, I'm retired. He's a truck driver. We're both very handy, so we're working on um, a rehab of a house that we live in. Now, I guess the conflict within me is that I'm more community oriented and always have been. So I'm kind of been pulled in, and now I'm kind of in charge of a community activist program, voting the whole bit. And so, yeah, I'm still working on the house, but we have conflict because he feels that I'm committed more to the community than to the our relationship. I'm, I'm kind of like letting one down and the other one is where all my energy goes. I, mm. I'm, I'm so what, what's, I feel like I, I'm protecting myself all the time. So what's your, what's your question? So my question is the balance. I'm trying to strike the balance of um, real communication, not demanding that you understand what I'm doing out here because we have to do this. I have to do it. But how do I ask instead of demand? Let me conflict now okay. with my communication. So that's 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 interesting. Um, let me ask uh, uh, one more question. I need a little bit more context. Uh, Saying that he has a problem with your community work, and yes. that you feel like you have to make it okay with him or ask him to do your work—is that what you say? Yes. Mm. Oh well, that's a that's a child. <laughs> I, I will tell you the truth. That is a child. That's simple, huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But because you need some listen, language to no, to <laughs> I, tell Fred, tell Fred language, to grow up. Let me, let, let, grow up, Fred. I'll give you the language, but I'm going to tell you the truth first. Right? The reality of it is no whole person is in competition with their partner's purpose. Hmm. Right? Yeah, I need you to – I hope that resonated with you. Yeah. No whole yeah. person – is in competition with their partner's purpose. Wow. If your purpose is to be out here and educate the community, first and foremost, that's an admirable act. And your partner, if he is a whole person that has integrity within himself, would be able to go, wow, this is a a meaningful and useful thing that my woman is doing. How can I help? Hmm. How can I help hmm. facilitate what you're doing? If you got to placate to his insecurities and fears, you are in a relationship, regardless of chronological age, you are in a relationship with a child. Yeah. I received that. Now, you, yeah, uh... now, now, here's the other part. You're retired. And you probably put in a lot of work and a lot of effort into this brother, right? Seven years. So now you're probably thinking, dang, I wasted my time. Oh. <laughs> Somewhat. Kind of yes. sort of. Yes. Kind of sort of. Yes. If it ain't no, it's a yes. Hey. Right. And here's the reality. Now you got to be honest with yourself. How much more time would you like to waste? Oof. Yeah. Hey, Jackie, I appreciate your call, and I wish you the best of luck in that situation. Uh, take a look at uh, Zoe's master class, uh, the University of You Relationship Master Class. Hey, look, man, um, you, you, you got a little bit of time, right? Because I know how them freeways are. You got time. Are we gonna, yeah, we, we gonna I, take actually, a... I do, but that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Hey, let me let me just say this. The master class is ZoeWhatMasterClass.com. Okay. That's how you get there. Zo what? Okay, <laughs> got it. That's easy. Zo what? Z-O-W-H-A-T dot com. Dot com. Zo what? No. You said Zo what dot com or Zo master what? Class. Master. Okay, my bad. Yeah, Zo what? Masterclass dot com. Yeah. Jackie, hey, Jackie, I, I think you... um. You you would that would serve you well, man. You get get your uh, questions answered uh, straight away. Eight six six eight zero one eight two five five. We're on with Zoe Williams. He's got uh, ZoeWhatMasterclass.com. 
a little bit of coaching, a uh, 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 little bit of relationship improvement. He's going to hang out with us. We're taking your calls. This is the Karen Hunter Show on Sirius XM, Urban View 126. We'll be back with you and Zoe in just a minute. You were you, 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 off, off the – I remember it like it was yesterday. Just, I mean, we went, we went to metaphysics in like 12 seconds. We went to, uh, uh, you know, spiritual dynamics. We went to numerology. We went to, uh, you know, uh, supreme mathematics like in seconds. So you are, you are I, I say that to say that you're the genuine article, like you're authentic. You don't, you don't play with this. And so it's a, it's a real thing. So that, you know, that I give you your roses now because of your credibility. Um, to that point, though, you know what is your you were, experience? Hey, you know what? Wait, wait. You were on my show. You were. I had a show on the Foxhole. Yes, that's true. That's right. That show. I had the voice of reason on Jamie Foxx's Foxhole. It was serious XM yeah. as well. Yeah. And we had a ball. You, hey, <laughs> man. They <laughs> created. I think Sirius XM created a. Uh, they created a promo for that show, and you were in the promo. That's how yeah, good yeah. you were on that show, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> man. I, cause, cause, man, I was new. I was new to LA, and I go in the room, and everybody there is like, you know, somebody. And I was trying to burn. I was trying to burn everybody up. I was trying to burn them up. Right. I was like, yeah, right. you know, had to put my foot in it. But yeah, man. To 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 that point though, um, dealing with people recently in the last few months, you know, trying to help people help themselves. How hard has this quarantine really hit relationships from your perspective? Oh, yeah. Well, again, the concept that uh, is in the relationship dismount, uh, relationship as a mirror, comes from an Indian philosopher by the name of J. Krishnamurti. He has a book called Relationship as a Mirror. Right. And I took that concept and broadened it. Right. So imagine living with somebody who is afraid to look at themselves truthfully. Hmm. And now you're quarantined with them. Wow. Right. (laughs) They're afraid to see themselves as they are. And now y'all got to stay in the house together. Man, <laughs> I'm just trying to process that, right. process that alone. Right, and that's just one See, person. That's just a, one person. Right. Some some it's some households you got both. Yeah. Exactly, and so it's the superficial activities that we do. Yeah, let's go to the to the bar and have some margaritas, and let's go to the beach and listen to jazz, and let's go do things so we don't have to see ourselves. Hmm. So now the quarantine has taken away all of the doing and this frivolous superficial stimulation. And now it's just you and your partner and all of the stuff you refuse to look at about yourself. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just, I'm just taking it in because that's real. I mean, that's just, that is, that is, that is where we're at. And, and, and I feel like there's no expiration date for that. Um, things are definitely exactly. not going back to the way that they were. So how do we, how, how do we then deal? How do we deal, stay safe and survive with each other cohabitating? Well, the simple answer is accept the reflections that are coming from your partner as a type of curriculum, as a type of self curriculum, right? Hmm. Right. You see what comes back from your partner. Have you ever noticed children mimic their parents, and, I, and, and I'm not talking about just the good things. The children model the bad aspects of their parents, too. Right. Right? right. So if right. that's the case, right, that's a function of relationship, mimicking and modeling each other, right? So if I'm mirroring and modeling things about you that I don't like, the first thing I need to do is accept that reflection from you. Hmm. Right. Yeah. It's easy to complain, but it's harder to claim. I don't like it because it's a reflection of me. 
Ah. Bars. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. What happens? <laughs> ah, right? <laughs> Bars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, not just because it's coming from you. I don't like it because it reflects me. Right, and, and how often are we to expose ourselves? Because again, that that's that goes back to what you were talking about earlier. That's trauma, and and if we've right. never dealt with it, then we're we're not going to put that on. That makes me vulnerable. I'm not going to put that on the table for you to attack it and pick it apart. Absolutely. So exactly. I'm a. I'm a so guess so, I'm a, I'm a, so yeah. guess who guess who you're in relationship with then yourself if you're with a person that can that can never be vulnerable right okay a child what you're in a relationship exactly what you're yeah, actually child. in a relationship <laughs> with is their expectations which was created by their coping mechanism where there is unhealed trauma there is a coping mechanism with corresponding expectations that comes along with it. Mm. Mm. Now, you get to hide those expectations under furry words like standards, principles. But really, this is the frontline security of your unhealed wounds. And in order for somebody to be with you, they got to conform to that military. Mm. Hey man, you giving up way too much game, and I, and I, I'm gonna have to turn <laughs> shortly in about 15 minutes. I'm gonna have to turn to my coping <laughs> mechanism, give me a cigar and a scotch, man, and just sit there and, and look at myself in the mirror, man. <laughs> Zoe Williams, man, so what? Masterclass, round of applause. I appreciate you for coming through, dropping jewels on a foolishness Thank Friday. You, uh, you're you're a wealth of information. You're a walking library, and I, and I hope to have you back. Uh, you know, sometime in the future, man. Appreciate you, man. Thank you, brother. And, and, and good luck with your son, too, man. You, you you told me he trying to, you know, he trying to position himself yeah, for the league. He's close. Yeah. yeah, man, he's close. He's close, okay. brother. I just dropped him off. He's close. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we heard the trainer say back-to-back. So no no back-to-backs today. <laughs> so when he makes it, man, we, we come on, we had that conversation. All right, there it is, ladies and gentlemen. ZoeWhatMasterClass.com. One more time, round of applause for the big homie. I don't care if it is a closet. You still looking mad at fish.